So, yes, you might know me from such films as Battle for the Planet of the Apes and, uh, no, actually. So, we're here to learn about stuff that I do, and I guess you're all here for that. So, kind of what I like to go over, let me get this thing away from my head. All right. How's that? Can you hear me? All right, it's not in my mouth. Good. All right, so kind of like what I, I like to do is like a Q&A, very interactive sort of thing. So feel free to ask me any questions about anything. It could be personal, unrelated to the course. It doesn't matter. You know, we're all here to learn something. And, of course, I can probably learn something from you people. You're all young and smart and interested in this kind of stuff. So what I, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a track from scratch. Uh, it might not be very good. Who knows, right? We've got time constraints. So, but, but basically, I'm just sort of go over my workflow, you know, how I get my drum sounding a certain way, like where a sub bass comes from, like all that stuff. I don't know. I guess some of you people might know some of my music. Okay. So, uh, um, so feel free at any time to interject. Also, uh, is there everyone here? You guys know Logic? Show of hands. Learning, well, you, you've got to, and all of you listen to dance music? Okay, I don't have anyone here who's into folk guitar or anything like that. All right, perfect. Um, so, yeah, uh, do any of you DJ? All right, so, well, you know, we can touch base on anything. Like, if you want to ask me, like, why do I not get any gigs or, you know, things like that. A anything, you know, anything as we go, you know, I like to diatribe and go and talk random stuff if I'm creeping you out or you feel uncomfortable just let me know i won't zero in and single any of you out don't worry um so yeah let's get started what i like to get started with is this thing called a kick drum now i really like the one in ultra beat also in my studio at home i have a lot of hardware which is you know midi gear and whatnot so but what i'm going to go through here is just stuff you can do in logic you know i arrange in logic i use logic for most of my uh most of my effects and stuff like that. Uh, I do have like a lexicon reverb and you know as far as my drum machine I tend to use the MPC or an 808 uh, for acid. I use a 303 but we'll go through everything you can do with logic you know and there's a lot you can do with logic. So T microphone how's this gonna work? So we're gonna start with the kick drum. Usually when I start a track I start it with the kick then I start working on uh, some drums, just to fill it in, give it a groove, play some keys, work on the bass line, and then usually delete everything, cause <laughs> and then do something really good with it. But, you know, today we're just going to sort of go through it. So we've got our kick, and so let's, what's going on here? I don't need the mixer, and we'll go down to the ultra beat. So I, I like to use a PC mouse with a Mac, because I'm rebellious like that. But you get the third tool, which I really find interesting, because and if you do like a, if you do the command and right click, you get your third tool, which is very helpful. You don't have to change tools that often. You know, it can totally interrupt your workflow and whatnot. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a little uh, groove here. Since I've done this once or twice before, I know what key the kick drum is on. Should be here. There we go. And then we'll set my tools up. I like a pencil over here. Sometimes I like a pencil behind my ear, but and then we'll set the velocity to our right click command tool. And then we'll put a kick drum in there. Whoop. And we'll hold this down and we'll bring the velocity so it's nice and loud. And now we've got a 4 4 kick. The nice thing about the Ultra Beat kick that I really like is it's tunable. So, say you're going to work in like an A or a C or something like that. You can sort of go into a key that's comparable or complementary, and that way your kick drum will, you know, stick out like a sore thumb in a good way. You know, the kick drum will be omnipresent everywhere. You know, a lot of the times, you know, I, I hear, you know, people send me promos and stuff, and I'm like, oh, you know, great track, but the keys, or the kick is totally out of key. You know, that kind of bothers me a bit. So it's always good to, ha to try and map your drums into a complementary key or, you know, tune them. Things like claps and hi-hats and whatever, you don't really, you don't really, you know, there, there's not a defined sort of key. But, you know, because a kick drum is sort of a bass instrument. Now, in over here in the envelope, we've got, I'm going to bring that out a little bit. 
I'm going to bring the decay in, and this little sustain knob makes it so, you know, this bit of decay is where it ends. It doesn't have the little tail off. I don't like tails. Yes, you that looks like my friend Cleo. <laughs> you really um, do look like my friend Cleo. It's, I am it's, your friend Cleo. Yeah. It's tripping me out. Hello, testing? Yeah. One moment. Oh, there we go. Ah, <laughs> all, right. all right. What was the, uh, the first thing that you pulled out? Was that the sustain? Right here? No, this the one above it. This one? Yeah, that one. This is just, this is basically, you know, it's all the way in there. Your kick is like a little in pinner. So you drag it out. It just basically, it, 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 it brings the whole sort of, you know, the whole level of the kick to your decay. So when you hit the kick drum, it's this big, right? Instead of hitting it and it's just a little in pinner and sounds like a tennis ball or, or trance. Sounds like a trance kick drum. So now we've got a nice beefy kick, but I can hear a little bit of a click on there. So we're going to, well, let's see how it. Why is my drum machine playing drums? I thought I fixed that. Well, we'll just mute you for now. We want to focus on the kick drum. Oh yeah, it's got its own kick playing, that's why. Let's go into the full view and we'll erase all these things. We don't like them. We're just using this machine for its kick drum. There we go. Look at that. It's not on play, though, is it? Yes, it is. We'll turn that out. This is uh, your play thing for the internal sequencer. So if you wanted, like, you know, make, you know, like an 808 or a 909, you just plug it all in. It's cool. It's got a swing. So it's like, you know, like with the MPC or a Lindrum or something like that, you can get a nice sort of walking groove. And there we go. So we've got a kick drum. We've accomplished something today. Uh, then I'm going to put the loop function on, as I tend to do with synth, synth parts. And then, you know, when you want to you wanna do something to them, you want to change it up, you can just cut it. Or if you want your, you know, kick drum to mute, you can just oh, place that on beat. And you can just mute it so that I, right here we'll have a breakdown, even though it makes no sense. We'll get to arrangement in a minute. But yeah, as I <laughs> digress. So now we've got a kick drum. We're all happy with that, right? We like this kick drum? All right. Let's see, what key are we going to work in? There we go. That sounds a little better. And right here is basically, this is like the top of your kick. This is what's known as the click. Because uh, basically, uh, it's a click and a sub that create a kick drum. Now, a synthesized kick drum is always much better to use than like a pre-sort of loaded sample because you don't know what, what key it originates in. So it's always good, you know, to, to do a synthesized kick drum. That's very, I find it very important. I'm kind of a kick drum nerd. So then, you know, you've got your, your, high, your high bit, which is the click, and you can kind of, why is that? Why can I not edit that? There we go. So then basically, you know, your click changes the key, so it changes the timbre of the top part of the kick. So you want to have it in some kind of complementary key. We'll, uh, we'll just go G and G maybe. Or G and E. That seems to work. We'll figure it out when we get to the bass line. Now, um, as far as the bass for today, this is a little secret that I like to do. Well, um, I really like, I used to have, I have this thing called the THX1Z for you Americans, THX1Z. And uh, all it was was a sine tone generator. Now, when you, when you have a sine tone, it's basically it's just a raw tone. Now, when you go down the scale, uh, when you open up your ESX24 and you don't load a kit, all it has is sine tones, which is quite nice. So when you want to like make some you know, punishing sub, da -da 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 -da, you go down the scale, bring that up so we can actually hear it. So there you go, you've got, you've got an already nice little subtone there. So I guess we'll work in C today since that seems to, and we'll just do like a little, and we'll loop that out so it plays through our arrangement. And 
not sure what quantize we're going to use today. I didn't load my MPC kit, so maybe we'll give it a 16 swing. Make it walk a little bit more. A little bit more not snap to grid, which is always fun. And then what I like to do is I like to, I'll pair the bass line with, you know, another bass tone. So then you've got like, you've got just your walking sub that's underneath, it's punishing, it comes through on a sound system, it's the kind of thing that makes people go woo when it comes in. And uh, then we'll go to some keys right now. So what do we have here? We'll make a new thing. We'll go to the ES2 and see what's in here. That's the other thing is I, I make a lot of sounds myself, but since I'm using stuff here, we're just gonna we're just gonna pretend using the presets is cool. But it's okay, we'll put effects on them and make them sound interesting. Let's see. Ooh, techno chords, that sounds fancy. Alright. Pretend we really like that. And we'll hit record. And obviously we don't want we don't want that red stuff popping up there. Alright, cool. And then we'll apply our swing to it. Swingy ding. So that way everything's in harmony. Happy together. I really enjoy the auto filter. So it makes it so your sound can do stuff. As we'll get to some automation in a little bit. So, you know, it can do this, it can do that. We're all having a good time. 125, hmm, I don't know, 123.4. That seems like a good tempo for us today. You guys agree? All right. Now we'll put a little bit of reverb on it. Let's see. This is where my lexicon reverb unit would come in very handy. It's got some really nice, nice reverbs in it. All right. Plate reverb. Everybody likes a plate reverb. Hmm. Is that a gated verb? Hmm. Come on. You guys can interject. We're making a track together here. <laughs> Do you normally use presets on your lexicon? Well, uh, the lexicon itself, it's got a bunch of knobs and stuff on it, so you just, like, tweak it out, you know? Just, yeah, fiddle with the knobs till it sounds good. That's sort of the motto of all this stuff. I don't know. I don't, I don't subscribe to any particular rhyme or reason. It's just like you pull up a sound and you do stuff with it and you try to make it interesting so that you're not completely bored while you're working on music and... You know, also at the end of the day, you want to make something that somebody might actually play. Hmm, Bell's effects. Let's see what that sounds like. Ooh, rich. <laughs> yeah, we've got a little bit of a red line there. We don't want that. Actually, I'm going to move this down here. Make some room for the stereo spread. Yes. And then... that around get it in a place now stereo stereo putting things in stereo because even you look at it you've got you've got a whole frequency range right now if you put too much in the same areas then you basically things start canceling each other out things don't move you know what i mean like when you, you start doing a mix down and all of a sudden you're like how come my hi-hats don't sound punchy or you know it's because you need to move them over here right they can like sort of dance over at that part of the monitors you get your chords in here your bass down there always, always i always envision everything in this big sort of oval you know like you know when you put a good pair of headphones on you there hey jay right on for doing this thanks hey um when you add a lot of the, the stereo spread, or I know it's not good to add too much, but have you ever done the process where like you bounce, when you're done with the track, 
bounce it down in mono to listen to everything to make sure that no not particularly have i'm you not heard that of people do yeah that I'm, I'm not really that anal also like some of my gear like you know my juno 106 is barely stereo <laughs> so then you know you, you know i'll actually record you know I'll, I'll i'll have the sequence you know done in the midi and everything and i'll just you know from my mixer just record it back in into a logic channel and then apply effects to it and you know leave it dry stuff like that but you know if there is no people say there's right and wrong with with music production to some extent there is a right and a wrong but at the same time if something's working for you and it sounds awesome because rules are made to be broken you know when you think about electronic music right if you had walked into a, a studio in like 1950 and like put some crazy flanger on those drums and then like we'll put this giant reverb they'd be like what the that, that's not allowed like go away get out you know you don't know what you're talking about so you know rules are made to be broken there's some there's some production rules that you always want to follow you know like Thelonious Monk my favorite keyboardist says there are no bad keys right it's all subjective to the listener you know there's stuff you listen to and you're like ooh these notes sound out of key but then to someone else it's like oh my god this is genius you know would you say it's more boundaries than rules yeah. Yeah, rules, boundaries. Boundaries, there's rules, and then there's, there's kind of boundaries. All right, you're supposed to talk into the microphone. You're, see, you're breaking the boundaries. You've exceeded the boundaries by... So, yeah, well... Okay, i got to say it again. All right. I'm going to ask it again. Would you say there's more boundaries than rules? Yes and no, though. You know, you, you know rules are made to be broken. Boundaries are something you want to stay within. Also, you know, it depends, like what kind of piece you're going for. If you're going for like the most crazy, eclectic, you know, piece of music that anyone's ever heard that's like, you know, space cosmic stuff that, you know, that, that, that's just so out there. They're really, you know, you're doing your own thing. And that's the, the beauty of creating music is it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be pushing your limits all the time. You know, I've been doing this for, I've been making music for 15 years, and I don't ever stop learning, you know. I'm always learning something new, like, always. There's always a new piece of gear to learn, or I'm just like, you know, I'm really into just, you know, all the reverb out on the, you know, it's just like you go through phases, you learn things, and like, you know, if you stop learning, then you get stagnant and boring, and you can hear it with some producers that they've just like, they've got their, they just do this, and that's it, and, you know. They, you know, you get bored of that. And you're like, I already have this track. You made this track already. You know, I try not to do that. Sometimes, maybe. All right. Ooh, we're still getting that red line. That looks a little better. Well, we're not going to get too anal here, though. You know what I'm talking about. No red line. Now, I'm um, also on the master. I tend not to do anything to it because for two reasons, my music gets professionally mastered by a label. So they like to have a raw file. You don't want to do too much to it. Um, also, there's a, I have a piece of gear, I have an Avalon that I do run things through. It's like a compressor limiter for when I want to just play stuff out, make it sound fat or whatever. But I really don't do a lot of post because uh, you know I do have the luxury that I'm sending it to a, a mix, you know, a mastering professional mastering place to do it but you know you can always like pull up like a compressor in logic you know it will make it sound fatter it's all up to you though right i'm not going to tell you not to use it Let's see what's the uh, compressor tools there we go analog tape everyone likes analog that sounds too sucking oh no it's okay just that first kick in the thing just punching a little bit too much. But yeah, we'll just leave that on for fun. It's something you can play around with your own logic. And, every, and the thing is, is all you guys are going to develop all your own styles. You back there. Um, obviously, you're doing the, um, the compression right now, right? Yep. What's your take on side change I don't like side chaining. What's the reason you don't like it? Because it sounds sucky. And I don't mean that in a it sucks way. I don't like it when the bass and the kick are like, sucking into each other and i know it's it's like pretty popular but I, I i'm i'm old i don't subscribe to it i'm i just i just find that you know the kind of music i i like to play and that i like to make it works on a sound system it works on a dance floor and then there's stuff i play and i'm and it, it does have a lot of side chaining and i just notice it it sounds so like pulled back you know what i mean like 
it just has like this overly tight. I want thing, you know, I like dub and stuff like that. I want bass to be fat and I don't want it to be choked out. I want the kick drum to just, you know, resonate and all that. So yeah, I'm not I'm not a big fan of side chaining. If you came here for side chaining, you know, you're gonna have to look at YouTube. All right, so I guess we're using the demo of this. <laughs> Disco mania, that doesn't sound very good. Let's look for a pad. Pad drifter, what do you sound like? Nothing, huh? I hear nothing from you, pad drifter. Yeah, that's a great preset. Punk in Berlin, that sounds scary. Saturation fifth. Wow, I'm not getting anything out of the synth at all. Is it because you don't own it? Could that perhaps be the case? All right, FM8, you are out. Sure you're not gonna do anything, nothing? Oh, I'm registering, registering keys. And it seemed to work for other sounds. Mm, maybe it's not. Is my MIDI controller broken? It was working before. Yeah. Everything was working before. Yeah. Maybe it's because these things aren't, they're demos and they've timed out or something. So we'll, we'll scrap them. And we'll just use what works. What else do we have that might work? I brought this one from home, so I know this will work. Let's look for a pad. Chill pad, sure. Oh, that seems to be working. All right. up our loop I think so I don't have these pads constantly doing the same thing we'll make a bigger loop here and we'll play that again on that. See, I'm really big into modulating the auto filter because I've got like a filter effects thing at home and it's pretty cool and I let, you know, you turn knobs and it does stuff. And it's always nice in an arrangement for things to be moving around. Like you could make the most simplistic groove, but as long as you do a lot of knob tweaking and effects, it suddenly becomes so much more advanced sounding. You know, if you're just moving filters and resonance and like you know, bringing up reverbs on like hi hats at certain points where you know you're reaching a crescendo or something like that. It works. We'll do that. All right. Fatness. We like it fat. Also with your low end, that's another little thing. When you put drums, hi-hats, claps, things like that, you're gonna wanna like just pull up your fat EQ and you're gonna wanna roll off that low 20 hertz because otherwise it creates what I like to call mud. And basically you have all these low frequencies that you can't hear that actually do exist, creating like a competition for, you know, 
all the frequencies. And so instead, if you do your little roll off on hi hats and things like that, that mud's gone. You know, most things do contain, you know, inaudible low end. So it's always good to like have it so nobody's competing, everyone's friendly and making a song together. <laughs> 